This is the thing that I'm most proud of in my career. This is the book that's going to inspire a new generation. Who inspired you in that way? Mick Foley, hence why I wanted to be the author of my own book. Whoever says don't be your heroes, their hero wasn't Mick Foley. What was difficult to put on paper? Anything with WWE, I thought needed to be handled with great care. In your book, you wrote, I'm not a dreamer. Oh, I'm such a dreamer. But I thought there was flaw in being a dreamer. Punching Dom square in the face. Was that intentional? Oh, yeah, 100%. One of my proudest moments. There's got to be some sort of revenge here for that. I think he felt that punch and probably won't. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author. That's me. Author. That's you. Yeah. Where does this rank on all of the great achievements you've had in your career? This is the thing that I'm most proud of um, in my career. Like, because it's just, it's... One, I think people expect me to be a good wrestler. You know, <laughs> I should be. That's my job. <laughs> um, but uh, but they don't expect you to be a great writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this is something that I always wanted to do, and and I'm really proud of it. And I'm I'm proud of the story that it told, and um the emotion that it brings. And it's 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 got everything. You know, it's uh, it's got comedy. It's got sadness. It's got heart. And uh, yeah, I'm just really proud of it. The way you wrote it makes it feel like you're actually like sitting there telling me these stories. Yeah, because I sit th sat there, wrote it, and told you these stories. Yeah, and so that's what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be something where uh, people wanted to turn the page and it was an easy read, an enjoyable read um, that people could kind of get lost in for a few hours because it's such um, an undertaking to ask somebody to pick up a book and read it because you have to put everything out you yeah, know yeah, you yeah. have to just take that time to pick it up to read and uh so if i'm asking people to do that i want to make sure that it's good uh, and i think it's good it is good i mean the new york times bestseller list it's pretty amazing this is the book that i think is going to inspire a lot of people this is the book that's going to inspire a new generation oh, i hope so who was the person that did that for you who inspired you in that way when you were starting out mick foley hence why i wanted to be the author of my own book because um, Mick was the person who I would see my brother be watching wrestling and I walk past the TV and I'm like, oh, don't you know that's all fake? Like the worst. And um, and, and my brother was like, you know, it's just, it's gotten really good. And then I'd see, I'd see Mick on the TV and be like, wow, the, the way he talked and the presence that he had, he was so captivating. And then, he, you know, I could relate to him because... I was this kid who had been teased for being overweight and felt like I didn't fit in, wasn't the typical, uh, he wasn't the typical superstar. And uh, and I could relate to that, you know, when he said, like, I can't jump high, but I can jump off of high places. Mm. And, uh, and, and so everything about him spoke to me. And also he just looked like such a good person. And then over the years, uh, I've gotten to know him. And, you know, whoever says don't meet your heroes, their hero wasn't Mick Foley. Because he's so great. Like when I told him I was writing this, like I wrote a, a draft, which wasn't very good, <laughs> uh, I would say. And he went through it. And first of all, he was so complimentary, so encouraging that I had a voice, that I had a unique voice, that I needed to use my voice. And then the other thing was he spent six hours on the phone just going line by line through the book, um, picking out like, so even even stuff like where I should have put a comma and so and I was like oh well a copy editor will pick all that up but like he just took that time because he cares so much he's wow. so great wow so you're you were sitting there writing this whole thing yeah when did the process begin I mean it started back in 2020 when I you know I I was pregnant the world was shut down well might as well start you know when I just started writing and it was just like word vomit onto a page like no censoring myself in any capacity just like let me get words down onto the page and then I'd reach a certain point and I'd kind of uh I get stuck and then I'd leave it for months on end and then I'd come back and I'd start again from the beginning and I would do this process over and over again until like 2022 2022 it was right as uh as I was having that match with Bianca at Wrestlemania and uh, I decided to take a writing course and I took a year long writing course and there was some stuff with my book deal where nobody had given me a deadline and uh, and, and it turned out to like just coincidentally 
the deadline ended up being right at the end of the book course. Mm. And so, so, um, so it worked out perfectly that now I had accountability, I could do it. And so, so within that year, I ended up handing in a draft and then I had problems with editors where like my one editor just disappeared and then there was another editor and we didn't click so much. And then I got this other editor, Rebecca Strobel, and she was like, amazing. She was amazing. So I sent her off the draft and then she came back with a bunch of questions and then I read it for the first time, like read it back in one thing and I was like, oh, I hate this. I hate this. And then I scrapped the whole thing and rewrote it in like about five weeks. Wow. Yeah. So that's a very long story about how (laughs) how long the process took, but like, you know, kind of took within three years, but also took five weeks. What was difficult to write? Like, because there's a very cathartic, carth- carth- I can't even say the word. Cathartic. Cathartic. Thank you. Wow. Uh, it's it's quite the process, right? Saying all yeah. these things, getting it out. What was difficult to put on paper? Um, uh, anything with WWE, I, I thought um, needed to be handled with great care because I don't think you can absentmindedly um, write about people that are in the public eye and um, you have to have a good representation of them and an accurate representation of them. Um, and so I wanted to detail everything very honestly, very factually, um, without, without letting my, my bias come into play. Like when was I the asshole? Like, wh- like, like, mm. like I need to own that. Like, let me try and see the other person's point of view because these people are, in the public eye and, and, and you want to represent them in the way that is most honestly. And, and here's another thing that Mick Foley told me was uh, never use a book to get back at anybody. Mm. Like never use it as a revenge tool, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to show them they don't have the chance to defend themselves. And, and I took that as I'm going to be the hero of my own story, right? If you're reading this, you're likely I'm I'm likely painting myself as the hero of my story. It's not fair for me to paint paint anybody as a villain, especially somebody who who doesn't have the chance to respond. So I really wanted to handle all of that stuff with care. Yeah, there's something that seems very permanent about putting it in a book. Yeah. Like Becky said this thing. Yeah. And look like headlines will always take stuff out of context, no matter what you say. Yeah. Um, but I at least want to contextualize it in in the book because it's one thing as well if you say something in an interview, but if it's, you know, because sometimes you just say stuff and you're like, ah, well, I'll think about it later. I'm like, oh, I said it like that, but actually what I meant was this. Mm. Um, but when you, when, you, when you write it in a book, the understanding is that you went in with more care. You examined it further. And so, uh, and, and so that was important to me. But the other thing about humans and life is that we're not obligated to be the same person that we were yesterday yeah. or even a few minutes ago, man. We're just changing constantly. Our opinions are changing constantly. We're constantly evolving and we should be, you know? And so, you know, that was me when I was writing it in 2023, you know? Who am I in 2024? Yeah, who are you? New York Times bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> were there moments where you would write something about Seth and, and like be like, oh, I, I can't wait for you to see this thing I wrote? That was my favorite part, like writing about him just because like I love the little blossoming romance, you know, like like I'd go back and be like, oh my gosh, this was so cute when we started together and um, just all the little threads with him before anything even happened. And uh yeah, it's, he's, he's my favorite topic, you know, him and my daughter. So what was your... <laughs> that part was easy. This episode is brought to you by Mando, and let's call a spade a spade. I think we all know somebody who could use a little help with their body odor, and perhaps it's you, and nobody's told you yet. Mando whole body deodorant doesn't just cover up odor after the fact with heavy fragrances like you might be used to. It actually stops odor at the source by blocking the bacteria on your skin from eating your sweat. That's the actual cause of BO. This means that Mando is clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. Yeah, three days. That's like a whole WrestleMania weekend 
plus the raw after mania. Just apply Mando and it stops odor anywhere that you have it and wish that you didn't. So we're talking pits, privates, feet, really anywhere. And Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. You'll get $5 off a starter pack when you use the code CVV at shopmando.com. That's the equivalent of getting 40% off your starter pack. So that's shopmando.com. The promo code is CVV so you can stop smelling. What was your first official date with Seth? Uh, ooh, I don't know what counts as that. Um, 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 uh, maybe it was uh, Bring Me the Horizon in, in the forum in LA. I think that was our first. It's a great band. Kind of official uh, date because uh, it, was, it was right before the Royal Rumble and he like showed me this song, um, Follow Ama, Follow Ama, Mo, Follow Ama. Um, by Bring Me the Horizon, I'd never heard of them before. I'm like, I, I love this song. And allegedly it reminded him of me. And uh, but uh, and he was like, look at how different they are. And he showed me their other stuff. And so then we got to go uh, see them live and pretty look, soon after. And that was cool. And look at you guys now. And look at us now. Look at you now. Married with a little three-year-old. That's amazing. Congrats. It's the best. Thank you. I I'm a girl dad. You're best. a girl mom. It's the best, man. So it really sassy is. and fun. How old is yours now? Ten months. Yeah. A little personality coming out. She's not saying real words yet. No. But some real personality coming out. Yeah. How sassy is Rue? Oh my gosh, the sassiest. She's just so and like the other day she she threw a few F bombs. What? You know, Where she is she like, learning oh, that from the well, rock? You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh and and like you're like how do you respond to that? Because it's so funny. You know what I mean? You're like, you're like, I got to shut this down. But also, it's so funny. <laughs> you know, so I think you just, you just got to ignore it. But she, man, she just got so much personality. Um, She's so sweet. She's so kind. She's so funny. And it's like funny to watch, like, because you, you'll, you'll see it. Well, because I look back at her videos, like when she was a little baby. You know, and like she didn't have words or, or or could even walk or anything. But there's that essence of like the sass, like the 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 personality. And it just develops and you're like, oh, you were always like this. You were always this like sassy little funny thing, you know? So cool. Is she more like you or more like Seth? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It depends who you ask. Like I say she looks like she does look like him. But then he's like, yeah, but you see you when you were a baby and she looks more like you. Um, but personality wise, she's so stubborn. And I say that's Colby. But Colby says that's me. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a blend of the two. Yeah. She's her own thing though, man. She's magic. How has being a mom changed your perspective of your career? Um, because I feel like you've, you've got part of you goes, I want to be there for every single moment that my daughter's doing anything. Yeah. At the same time you go, I want to be a great role model and example for my daughter and I want to just keep kicking ass. Yeah. That. that it's one. it's complicated, right? Yeah. Like, because there's there's both. It's it's you just want to spend time with your kid, you know, like I've I've gone and she's going, Don't leave me, mama. Don't leave me. And especially, you know, the last week with the book tour and then this week is crazy because it's WrestleMania and then we've got a lot of uh tours coming up. And, and, you know, we were in Perth and so we had to leave her and, and stuff like that is so hard. It's so hard. And like, I have to remind myself that my mom was also a flight attendant. She was gone, but I don't remember her being gone. I just remember her being present. I remember her always making cakes for the bake sale. I remember her, you know, I just, I remember snuggling with, I, I don't remember the absence of her. I just remember the presence of her. Mm. And so I need to remember that whenever I'm feeling... But also, sorry, um, it's, I, I feel so lucky that I still get the part of me that was me before I became a mother, you know, because you change so much and, and you become a new person, your priorities switch. And, and that's an adjustment for a lot of women. I think maybe every woman, because you, you now have a new identity. 
And sometimes you lose that person that you were before and you almost have to, in a way, and I've talked to other people, like you have to grieve the person that you were before. And it's an amazing thing and it's a wonderful thing to be a a mother. But you also, in, in, in some ways, miss that person that you were before. I get to keep that and I get to still keep that thing that, you know, made me feel like like me, the thing that I love, and I get to have my daughter. So I, I feel so lucky. She made her debut. She made her WWE debut. She did. Being carried into the ring yeah. like Seth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much thought went into like, okay, are we are we ready for her to, you know, be on TV for everybody? Uh, yeah, um, a little bit. She's, you know, I think uh, it was it was Colby had the idea. And then we're like, Rue, do you want to go to work with, with Dada? And she was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, maybe because she loves, like, getting her makeup done. And so she does all that stuff. And I was like, do you want to get, you, do you wanna get your, your hair done? And she wanted to look like Karen from Frosty the Snowman because she loves Karen from Frosty the Snowman. So she, like, <laughs> got her hair done <laughs> in a little thing. Like, they tried to give her bangs. And by the time she was on TV, it was all over the place. But it was so cute. And she'd, like gotten a little makeup brush and put like pink eyeshadow on herself and uh yeah but then but then <laughs> you know he's like okay we, we, we're gonna go in and she goes are people gonna hurt me and I was like <laughs> oh no baby no because you know she 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 sees us with boo-boos on, on ourselves all the time yeah. you know so she goes in and goes is somebody gonna hurt me and we're like no we'll never let anybody hurt you so trying to explain that not all work involves getting hurt <laughs> and banged up and not all friends are pushing each other and punching each other. Um, it's kind of a hard thing to explain to a three-year-old, you know, when she sees mama and dada are working and then we're just getting beat up. <laughs> I was surprised to read in your book, you wrote, I'm not a dreamer. I don't think you can get to where you're at right now. <laughs> <laughs> without dreaming in the biggest way. Oh, I'm such a dreamer. I'm such a dreamer. Yeah, but I like I I thought there was um a uh, flaw in in being a dreamer because my dad was a dreamer. And um and I watched him for many years um struggle to to find his feet. Um and uh and and be unemployed and you know um, my mom found that that quite hard um, in terms of oftentimes she'd be the, 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 the biggest breadwinner in the house. And it's kind of one of those things that I didn't appreciate until it was too late. Like, um, But certainly in my teen years, I kind of looked at it as a bad thing. Um, of course, now I look at it as a great thing, uh, especially because my dad, my dad was a dreamer. My mom was the practical one, the one that that had that work ethic. And so the blend of the two allowed me to to dream, but work really hard at it, Mm, you know? mm. We'll get back to the conversation in just a second. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew, and your first month is free. You just have to pay $5 shipping when you go to bluechew.com and enter the promo code INSIGHT. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part is it's all done online. So no doctor's visits, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. So if you've ever thought about giving Blue Chew a try, this is your chance. Your first month is free when you go to bluechew.com and enter the code INSIGHT at checkout. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com. Enter our new promo code, which is INSIGHT, and you'll get your first month for free. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. Big shout out to Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. You said something else. It's a phrase that I love. How you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. For someone who's never heard that phrase before, what does that mean to you? Um, God, it's just kind of as, as, as it is, you know, if you, if you, if you, if, if you're, if you're half asked about how you do whatever, whatever it is, yeah, yeah. you're going to be half asked in how you do everything. But if you get into the habit of doing things with with precision and excellence, then it becomes a habit, and that's how you uh, 
that's how you approach everything in, yeah. in life. I think is is the but how do you how do you take that? I think you're right. I think <laughs> yeah. like if you're willing to take shortcuts on some things, ah, yes. nobody will find out. Then you're probably willing to take shortcuts on other things. Yeah, right. But there's like here's there's the other interesting thing about that, right? Is I'm not a perfectionist too. Um so so sometimes I I find that like like I'm I'm like should I be more of a perfection? But I also don't think you can be in life because if you want things to be perfect, um, well, they're never going to be. Yeah, perfect's never, unattainable. It's, it's it's unattainable. Yeah. So I just like to do my best. You just do your best. You know, we're all just trying to do our best. You know, I think that's, I think that's it. What's your most perfect wrestling match you've ever had? Ah, I of course, mean, perfect is unattainable. There is but... definitely no such thing. Oh my gosh, there's no such thing. Like. Um, uh, my, my, m one of my, uh, maybe I really love the, the match that Trish and I had, and I'm trying to, th like, that was one where I didn't leave going, ah, you know, um, because even like, I'm, I'm thinking of all my favorite matches, like, uh, um, Charlotte, at R Evolution, uh, there was still some things where I was like, ah. Um, Bianca at WrestleMania 38, one of my favorite matches of all time that I've had. There were still times where I was like, ah. No. Like I kicked her right in the face. You know, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like stuff like that. Um, uh, that maybe ended up making it better. But but sometimes that's also the thing. Uh, not that kicking Bianca right in the face and giving her a, a massive black eye made it better. Um, maybe more brutal, but obviously I apologize um, but, uh, but sometimes, sometimes it's the flaws and things that make them, that make them better and make them, um, give them that grit. And I also love, I love, I love grit. I don't mm. like, I don't like pristine things, you know, I like a little bit of, of grit and roughness and especially in a wrestling match, you know, I don't like yeah. everything to look clean and perfect and cause it shouldn't, it's a scrap. You know, I love a scrap. I love I love a match that looks like a scrap. Was you punching Dom square in the face? Was that intentional? Oh yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I still have a little cut on my on my on my. Oh my, yeah, my look knuckles. at that. Yeah, a little scab there. That was that was one of my favorite. Moments. In slow motion, it's oh, brilliant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good. <laughs> He's kind of like that emoji where like the the like face, the, the goes, wonky yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah, one of my one of my proudest moments. I mean, behind writing this book, <laughs> it was it was right right there doing the Lord's work. Pow! Yeah, like right on the button. Yeah, and he went down. He did go down. Yeah, it's great. You better watch out though. Like, there's gonna there's got to be some sort of a revenge here for that. You think on me? I mean, you think he's coming after me? Um, he might send someone after you. Well, I think uh, I think he felt that punch and probably won't. <laughs> probably won't. I think he's probably done with me. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would suggest. If he is Ooh, smart. That's right. If he is smart, he will probably be done with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, round two coming up, you know? When we talk about things having flaws, not being perfect, I don't know if you've, if you've talked about this before. What happened at the end of WrestleMania 35? Because it looks like Ronda kicks out at one. Or, yeah, yeah, maybe. What happens there? I don't know. I, like, I was in the moment. Um, but I, I did, uh, and, you know, I, I, I couldn't see it. Um, but you know, the, the discourse afterwards and also the sound of the audience made it, uh, made it seem like something had gone wrong, but obviously at the time I wasn't aware. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that was intentional or, or accidental. Like, um, I could see the motivation for it being intentional. Like, oh, well, this will be my out to, to get, to get a second match. You know mm. what I mean? Um, in in the long in the long game, or could have just been accidental. But you know? that was the way the match was supposed to end. Uh, with a with a pinfall, not yeah. with not with the shoulder <laughs> up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But with a pinfall, yes, yeah. Hmm. And you talk in your book about how the original finish was her tapping out, and she's like, "I'm not going <laughs> to." Well, so, so that was that was uh, the creative that was laid out, and um, <laughs> and so she she had uh, her driver taking her to the wrong spot, and so. She showed up, um, I think, like an hour, and we had just been talking through stuff, and um, and, uh, and 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 TJ, our producer, 
an amazing producer, TJ Wilson. I've known him since I was um, since 2006, and we were road tripping across Canada and into Washington and Portland and stuff. It's a wild journey. Um, anyway, he's like, maybe maybe you have Rhonda in in a in an arm bar. She goes. She she looks like she's about to tap out, and so Rhonda Rhonda comes and uh, and we tell her the creative, and. Uh, and uh, we say, and then you're you're almost about to tap out. So, oh no, my mom wouldn't wouldn't look me in the eye or talk to me again if uh, if I looked like I was about to tap out. And we're like, all right, well she's probably not gonna tap out on the finish. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, like she never tapped out in her career. So, um, understood it, respected sure. it, and uh, and and moved on quickly. Like I was gonna win, I was gonna win two titles in the main event of WrestleMania. Like it was not, it was not a big deal whether she tapped out or not it was um i, I was winning <laughs> and, so the, she, and she was doing the honors this know? got made into a much bigger thing than it actually was yeah oh yeah. wait what it, it was like headlines oh like. yeah i mean headlines always that's the thing like people will always take anything that you say and make a headline out of it and it's taken out of context and you know there's been so many times where where i've been like ah i said that that's not what i meant <laughs> you know but I think I explained that in the book. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I do say that, that uh, like I I didn't either way I was going to win. It did not matter to me yeah. how it was done. That's got to be a difficult part of your job because you got to take the good with the bad with all of this, right? Like there's yeah. so much good and then there's some, you know, frustrating things I'm sure that come with that. Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, but you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't change it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you all the, all the good that it's given, given me for the, for the small amounts or large amounts sometimes of, of stress that it also causes the overwhelm. But that's life, isn't it as well? Do you know, like you can't, you can't have everything. I mean, in that regard, like, yeah, there's always going to be stress. There's yeah. always going to be anxiety. There's always going to be things that you wish you didn't say. There's always going to be things that you wish you didn't do. That's life. We're not perfect. We just got to move on and do our best, you know? And then sometimes you get happy accidents, like getting punched in the face. Yeah. Your face being bloody. Yeah. And you become the man. Yeah, exactly. You know? And like, so stuff like that. N Naya, like I said, I text her. So you, so I'm so sorry. You know, felt, and I talk about this in the book, felt horrible. Anybody who hurts somebody feels horrible. What if that didn't happen? then I wouldn't have that cool image. So, you know, thank you, Naya. First time anybody, first and last time anybody's going to say that. <laughs> when you went to the back after the infamous man moment, yeah. your face is bloody, you're in the crowd. Well, what was the conversation like backstage? Uh, I had no clue where I was. I had no clue where I was. I was like, where, where are we? How did I get here? Like I was able to run on autopilot all the way up to that. And then, and then I just, I was, it was just black. I had no clue. Remember Stephanie McMahon looking after me in the trainer's room, like being very kind. And I just remember the coldness in Kansas that night. And uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know what the conversations were. The conversations were like, like, did I break my neck? Like I remember my neck just killing me. I, I had no idea what had happened to me. When did you start to piece it together? Uh, it wasn't until I was in the hospital. And Natty, Bailey, and Sasha came to visit me. And like, I, I was like lying there and they came in and, and they were like, do you know what happened? And I was like, no, but I remember you guys had a really good match. You had a really good match right before. And, and then I started piecing together like spots from their match and telling them their their own match back. And then I was like, and then we came, and then it started to kind of come together a bit better. How does the girl who had that WWE debut, the one that you described to me as being worse than Shockmaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does that girl become the woman that's sitting in front of me right now? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, worse than Shockmaster, come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't, so here's the difference. He didn't intend to fall over. <laughs> I intended to do that. It's quite the dance. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think that makes it worse. You know, I think, I think undoubtedly that makes it worse. Um, you probably thought it was great at the time. Uh, 
I was just trying to get on TV. And at the time, NXT was so gimmicky and I had no shame. Um, but look, like, like I said, we are not obligated to be the person that we are, that we were yesterday. Can always change. I love can always that. evolve. Um, and, and, and we have to continue to do that. And I think I talk about it a lot in the book. Like, I beat myself up constantly over everything. Probably a bad thing. It's, it's a bad thing, right? But it's also a good thing because because of that, I'm always trying to evolve. I'm always trying to look at how I can be better, how I can do better, how I can uh, change, and 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 I I try to be as self aware as possible. Don't know that I always am, but at least try to be and and try to be as self correcting as as possible. I try not to. Um, I try not to. I'm sure I do it often, but I try not to put the heat on other people. Yeah. For for like, uh, like how how can I how can what can I do to change so that I can be better so that I can be undeniable so that they can't overlook me anymore. Like and and um, approach that with as much gentleness as possible. I'm, I'm not gentle on myself though at all. I tend to be very hard on myself. Wrestling is like in this, it's, it's cool again. Something's happening right now with wrestling where it's, it just feels different. What do you think it is? Um, I think it is the leadership that we have right now and that things are thought out. Because it was no secret that before the show would be rewritten as it was going on. I talk about it in the book. It wasn't unheard of for them to have a show on paper and we'd show up and Vince would tear it up and and we'd start from scratch and then 6 p.m. your creative changes and then you're like, oh, okay, well, what are we doing? And it didn't always play off of what we had done last week. And now um, with Hunter in charge, he has a vision. He sees it through and uh, and... That's what you need for a TV show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't start filming Succession episode one without knowing where you're going in episode five, yeah. you know? And and so um, I think that's been been a huge change. Um, and then, you know, the, the reins are off a little bit in, 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 in terms of, of letting people have a bit more freedom to try things out, try, fail. Um, see if things work, see if they don't, um, and have a conversation there. I think that just makes a world of a difference. Yeah, it feels like it. Also, how good is Succession? Oh, so great. Good. just great. Oh, my gosh. Just great. But, you know, like, you, it's any TV show. You can't, yeah. um, you, you, you can't just be like, okay, Tom is going to. Yeah, we love Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, um, Tom is going to blow up the building. Wait, what happens next week? Oh, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? These characters need to know where they're going. They need to have an arc. Yeah. And and if, when you know where you're going, then okay, well, okay, we're here, and I know that I'm going to there. How do we get there the best way possible? Yeah. Makes a makes a world of a difference. Since Seth has the wrestling school, mm -hmm. which Seth Rollins moves have you taken? I haven't taken any. Have I taken any? I don't know. Have you? I feel like you might mix it up in the ring a little bit. No, I've taken none of his moves. Okay. Yeah, no, I've, I don't think, no, you're I've like, never I have no desire to take a stomp. Uh, oh, as in like, oh, taking it from him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I never did. No, I'm no, not saying no. you've stolen a move from him. No, oh, no, that's sorry. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying that. Yeah. I, what moves have I stolen? No, I haven't no, no, stolen. No. I've never used any of his moves. Um, Not intentionally, anyway. I don't think. Um... No, but you've never be, been in the ring. No, He's like, I gotta try a, this thing. Uh, Come on over here. No, no, huh? he has students for that. <laughs> he has students for that. And I'm not taking books on my off days. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the job for him. No, no, um, no, no, no. I'm just kidding. And um, we've wrestled around. And like when I was coming back from, um, from from uh, from having Rue, like we did a lot. And I'm just trying to think if. if if I took any of his signature stuff, I don't think I did. I think it, people just have this great image of like, 
you getting a stomp or something. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think <laughs> so. A, he probably went for one and I probably tucked it and oh, put him in arm bar or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Congrats on this. Congrats on everything. It's such a pleasure to be able to sit down in person and be able to do this with oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not a Zoom person. I don't I'm like it. I'm not either. I just, you know, I feel like there's this, um, there's the energy that you, you don't have when you're, when you're on a Zoom because like, there's always that like, am, 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 am I about to talk? But you just read that in, in person. You know what I mean? People are always talking over each other and it's like, are they finished? And now, I, yeah, I just, ah. You know what else it is? You're looking at a two-dimensional representation oh, that's of a person. Yeah. You're not even looking at the person. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you meet someone? Like, are you, do you feel like you've actually met someone if you've only met them on Zoom? No. No. I agree. No, no, no. I no. agree. Yeah, and it's easy to, to forget. Well, especially when, you know, we're in this world and we're meeting people constantly. Yeah. But, like, I think, uh, yeah, it becomes harder to, to remember those interactions. And when you see them in person, it's always, like, so good to finally meet you. Yes. 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 And then, like, how much time do you spend, like, looking at yourself? You're like, oh, God. It's so yeah. true. You know what I mean? It's so and true. You're like, oh, I feel like such a vain asshole. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but so. I'm, I'm glad we did this one in person. Me too. I end every interview with gratitude because it's such a big part of my life. I wake up every day. I say out loud three things I'm grateful for. And we do it before we go to bed. So what are three things in your life uh, you're grateful for? My daughter, my husband, uh, <laughs> and being a New York Times bestseller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank, thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you. You're awesome.